photo the riff rundown with my friends at Fishman. My name is Angela Petrilli. So, so happy to be here today on a Saturday teaching you guys how to play some of my favorite songs live. All right, so today's episode is pre-recorded. I'm doing a little bit of traveling this month, but don't worry. We're still gonna have a lot of fun with this one, all right? So this is one of my favorite songs. I think one of the most iconic songs to come out of the 90s. We're gonna be learning Mr. Jones by The Counting Crows. So I, I'm teaching this on an acoustic guitar today in standard tuning. You can play along on acoustic guitar. If you have an electric in standard tuning, totally cool too, all right? So I wanna mention as well that this lesson is geared towards my beginners. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of open chords. There's gonna be one bar chord in the song, but my intermediates and my advanced folks who are watching today, I want you to do me a big favor before we get started. Let's put some words of encouragement in the comment section for any beginners who are taking part in this lesson today. I'm really loving the very positive community that we're building here um, on this channel and with these riff rundown episodes. And I'm, I'm just loving how, how cool everyone is to each other. Know that I see it and I so appreciate it. So let's keep it going. So thank you all so much for that. All right, so before we get started, folks, you know I always like to ask a question. So let me know where you are tuning in from. Let's see, and dream guitar. Acoustic or electric, whatever it is. If money was no object, what's your dream guitar? I wanna know, put it in the comments. All right, so. Standard tuning, acoustic or electric guitar, here is Mr. Jones by The Counting Crows. here, right? There's only one bar chord that we're going to be dealing with here today. So a lot of this open cowboy chords, okay? Really stick into the third, the first three frets for the song for, for, for the most part, at least for the, uh, the acoustic parts. All right, there are a couple really cool little lines that I will talk about as well. Some little riffs that we see in the first verse and in the bridge, and we'll talk about those too. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and look at the intro here. So let's go ahead and talk through each chord and then we'll talk about how to play them. So we have A minor over E. Okay, we have F major. We're gonna have D minor. And we're gonna have G. So those are gonna be the four chords we see in the intro, we see in the verses, all right? So this A minor over E, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a crazy name. Don't worry, it's actually not too bad. If anything, it's probably a little bit easier to play than A minor. So, looks and sounds like A minor. However, we're going to add this E in the bass. So that's an A minor slash E. Okay? So, with the three notes that we need to make this A minor chord, let's first talk about well, what they are and, and how to play them. So, for a minor chord, the formula is going to be a one flat three and a five. In this case for A minor, it's going to be A, C, and E, 
ace. I know for me it's an easy way to remember that, so ace, like the cards, okay? So let's talk about how to play them. Let's find those three notes. Our first finger replacing that on the first fret of the B string, that is your C. Second finger reaching up to the second fret of the D string, that note is E, E is an elephant. And then your third finger is going to be placed on the second fret of the G string, that note is A. Now, usually what we do is we strum from the A string downward on this chord. And it sounds like that. But with A minor over E, what we do is we now include this low E string. So it'll sound like this. Not much of a difference, okay? But still, having that fifth in the bass, those of you were paying attention earlier, right? A moment ago, I said A, C, and E. So that E is our fifth. So now we're putting it up here in, 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 in the bass regions of the chord. So this is pretty much an A minor over E is an A minor and you strum every string. Okay, so that's what's happening there. And that's the chord that we're using here. So with the F chord, okay, and I was watching them play it live, a couple of the guitar players in the band were playing it like this. They were not playing it as a bar chord. Could you play it as a bar chord? Totally. But there is something a bit more, and, and those of you familiar with the beginning of the song, it's got this really cool, like, trebly kind of intro. When we play the bar chord, it might sound a little big. Okay, so I will leave that up to you. I like the way that they do it with this version of F. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do this. So my beginners who are watching, don't fear this chord, okay? It's not so bad, okay? Perfect practice makes perfect with this chord, okay? Or any good chords that we play. So first finger, placing that across two strings, first fret of the B string and first fret of the E string like this. So you're gonna wanna pinch it. Okay, so my thumb, we can't see it right now, but I'll show you if, if the guitar was clear, the fretboard or the neck was clear. If you want your thumb and your first finger looking at each other, okay? So we want to squeeze there. We don't want the thumb up too high, all right? We wanna start off there. When we're first learning this chord, we want them facing each other, okay? Good, nice pinch, like a, like a crab or a lobster or whatever. <laughs> whatever helps you think of that, all right? So like that. So those notes there are F and C. First fret of the E string is F. First string, first fret of the B string is C. That's how it's gonna sound, okay? Now your second finger reaching to play the A note, second fret of the G string. So right there, we've got the three parts that we need to make that F major. We're gonna add one more F here with that third finger reaching third fret of the D string, which is F. So you're gonna strum the D string, G string, B string, and E string. All right, so we want to try to avoid, really don't try, don't play the E string. It's gonna sound a mess. That we don't wanna do. If you happen to get the A string in here, it's fine. A is included in the chord. If you happen to catch it, it's not the end of the world, okay? So let's go ahead and, 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 and strum this out. Just that A minor to F, let's, or A minor over E uh, to F rather. Okay, let's just go through those two nice and slowly here. Strumming from the elbow, having a little bit of wiggle in that wrist, but we don't want all the power coming from that wrist. Let the, let the upper arm and that elbow really help you move when you're strumming. Okay, so let's do that again. Don't forget to pinch with that F chord. Let's do this one more time. That's what's happening there. Next chord is gonna be a D minor. So what are the three notes we need for this chord? D, F, and A. So F, that's our flat third. D and A, there are one and there are five respectively. All right, so here's how we play that first finger, placing that on F, first fret of the E string, second finger reaching up, second fret of the G string, that note is A. Third finger is playing the D note, third fret of the B string. We're gonna strum from the D string downward. Just like that, all right? 
Mm. Now from here, we're gonna go to a G chord, all right? Notice with my third finger, watch it again. Notice how the third finger did not move. Use this third finger as a pivot point, switching between that D minor to that G, okay? It's gonna make things a little smoother, all right? So having said that, let's talk about how to get to this G chord from this D minor in this song. So what I would like you to do first, before we even move the first or second finger, put the fourth finger down on G third fret of that E string. Okay, get that bottom half of the chord ready. Then your first finger reaches up to play B, second fret of the A string, and then your second finger plays G, third fret of the E string, strum everything. Okay, so let's go through that. Let's just strum them. Let's do that again, D minor to G. One more time. that. So let's go ahead and combine everything A minor over E to F to D minor to G. Here we go. Keep that third finger down as that pivot. mention this too because of the tonality of the song how it's that nice like trebly really cool really cuts through kind of intro with guitar chords I am playing a thinner pick for this all right I'm not playing a heavy pick because sometimes with a thinner pick you can get a little bit more of a cut with the chords so that's what I'm using here today so I'm using a thinner pick a lot thinner than I'm used to but it really does get a cool interesting tone with this all right not totally necessary if you're more comfortable with heavier picks, totally fine, but something I did want to mention, okay? So for the verses, the order is gonna be this. We're gonna go from that A minor to F to D minor to G. Then we go to A minor to F to G, all right? So we're gonna do that a couple of times here, okay? This is gonna be the verse section. Again, A minor to F, D minor to G, A minor, F, and G. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And again, I'm gonna stick with the pattern. I'm gonna play this a little slower, all right? So here we go. So our chorus is gonna look and sound like this. Three chords, folks. C, F, and G. Done, okay? So it's gonna sound like this. This is the chorus. Again, simple, friendly 
chords here, folks. Simple, simple friendly chords, all right? So we're gonna first start with the C major chord. Again, what are the three notes we need? We need C, E, and G. That is our one, three, and five of this chord. Let's find them. First finger placing that on the first fret of the B string. There is your C. Second finger reaching, we're gonna skip that G string, okay? We're gonna play that open. Second finger is going on the second fret of the D string. D is in dog, that note is E. Third finger reaching up, remember, keeping these nice and curled here, getting as close to the frets as you can without touching them. Third finger, third fret, A string, that note is C. So, if we strum this chord, that's what you wanna hear, all right? It's a beautiful one. Love C major, it's great. Okay, so that's C major. The next chord here is gonna be F. Now, if you're not ready for bar chords yet, you're like, oh my gosh, can I just stick with this one? Of course, you could totally stick with this. Totally fine. For a chorus, me personally, with songs like this, heavy driven rhythm, um, in a chorus I do like to have a bit heavier version of a chord when it makes sense. In this song, I think it really makes sense to play the F bar chord in the chorus. So that's what I chose to do here. So to play this F bar chord, how do we do this? First finger placing it across all six strings at the first fret. My beginners, I, I remember learning this chord. I remember it not being fun. I remember not being it fun and it sounding lousy for a little bit. Again, perfect practice makes perfect. Making sure the technique is really good. Okay, good things take time. So if it doesn't sound great today, Remember these little steps, okay? Because it's gonna make it sound great later, all right? But stick with it. So again, that first finger across all six strings, the first fret, okay? Second finger placing that on the second fret of that G string, that note is A, that's gonna be our third. Third finger reaching up on the third fret of the A string, that note is C, there's our five. Fourth finger just below it, third fret, this time of the D string, there is your other F. You're going to strum everything. You may be asking, Angela, where's your thumb? <laughs> My thumb is in the middle of the neck. When we're doing bar chords like this. We don't want our thumb all the way up here because watch what happens. This is good technique. Thumb in the middle of that neck, okay, in the middle of the chord. All right, so my thumb here, I'm looking at it. It is facing, right, that thumbprint part of my thumb is looking at the tip of my second finger, okay? So that's where you want that thumb placed. Now notice, if I were to move my thumb up, this is something you do not wanna do. Notice how the hand shrinks. See how we can't grip that bar cord. Notice when I put the thumb there, everything is nice and aligned. The hand is stretched. The second that thumb comes up, see how the hand just shrinks. That we don't want. That's the importance of that thumb. And I'm really taking my time. I really want you guys to know this. All right, especially my beginners. Thumb placement, crucial with bar chords, crucial with bar chords, particularly this one, all right? So keeping that in mind, keeping that thumb in the middle of the neck, okay? Just like that, and press through. And if it makes you feel any better, bar chords usually as you go a little bit higher, particularly in this region of the guitar, a little bit easier to press. This one's a tough one to press, but stick with it, okay? So there it is there. Then we go to our G chord, we've already talked about it, folks. All right, so the order of the chords, because we're gonna play it in a second, the order of the chords here in the song, in the chorus, it's going to be C to F to G, C to F to G, C to F to G, C, F, G. That's it, it's the order of the chords, okay? So, what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna look at the chorus, okay? I'm gonna switch between those two. I'll start off a little slow, Okay, to get that switch from that C to that F chord, all right, and then to that G, and then we'll include um, some of the intro and verse in it too. All right, so let's just look at the chorus for right now, and then we'll look at the bridge real quick, and then we'll look at some of those riffs, and we're gonna call it a day, folks. Again, those of you, if you're enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel, click that like button. It helps the cause and helps the algorithms and all that stuff. And if you wanna learn more about the Fishman gear that I'm using in these lessons, I put a link in the video description so you can check out all the cool stuff Fishman's up to. All right, so let's go ahead and do that chorus. Last 
last one. Let's go ahead and add a verse. with that arm we keep moving I want you to think like a drummer with this song all right and sometimes when you're strumming this is a question I get a lot from my one-on-one -on -one students like ah oh, do I have to strum all the strings all the time listen we're human sometimes you're strumming and you miss the strings it happens but keeping that arm moving all right I know it's like tapping your head and and, and rubbing your stomach but again Perfect practice makes perfect. Can't play anything fast, so we can't play slow, all right? So let's go ahead and look at the bridge. So what happens here is we have that second verse after the first chorus, and then we have our second chorus. Now at the end of that second chorus, we're gonna have an A minor. And you're just gonna let it ring. You're gonna strum it once. See, listen to that sustain, let it ring, okay? So then from there, all of these chords in the bridge until the very, very end, they're gonna be whole notes. Okay, so what that means is we strum them once and we let them ring. We strum it once, we let it ring, all right? So these chords, it's gonna be F major seven to A minor and G. All right, so those are gonna be the chords, is gonna be an F in there too, all right? So with that F major seven, this is a new chord here. This chord, okay, remember how we just played this F? All right, F major seven is even easier. That's what we're gonna do here. The first finger lifts to only play the first fret of the B string, that note is C. Then your second finger plays the second fret of the G string, that note is A, third finger reaches to play F, third fret of the D string. What makes it an F major seven is this E. That's what makes it a major seven. That added fourth note happens to be E. And we're just gonna strum the D string downward and let it ring. And then A minor and let that ring. And then G, letting that ring as well. All right, going back to A minor. Now this time we go back to F. Again, one strum, let it ring. To A minor. G, back to A minor, to F. Now the last two chords of this bridge are gonna be A minor and G. This is where we can start strumming again. And then we go to our chorus. So that's what's happening there. So again, I'll go through that bridge. A minor, let it ring. F major seven, let it ring. A minor to G to A minor to F to A minor to G, A minor, F. A minor start to strum, G start to strum, okay? So I'm gonna do that again nice and slowly here starting at the A minor. So 
that's what's happening there. That's the song, guys. That's, that's pretty much the song. So we're gonna do here, to finish this off, there are a couple of really, really cool little guitar licks that are in this, particularly one that you're gonna hear at the 53 second mark and the two minute and eight second mark. It's really fun and again, super beginner friendly. It goes like this. And it's a great, super melodic riff that's built right around that A minor chord. So let's go and, and look at how to play this. So you're going to play the open B string. You're going to hammer on with your first finger on that C note, then release back to the open B string. See how it's a pull off? See how it's a pull off? Because I, I lifted the hand, so I want you to I want you to see it. You can pull that off. Okay. From there, open G string. Hammer on with the second finger, second fret of that G string. That note is A. So the whole riff sounds like this. All right, let's do that again. So this happens in the first verse, and when they play this live, they use this little lick quite a bit within the verses of the tune. So I encourage you, listen to the album version, then listen to some live versions of this, and you can hear this riff as well in there, okay? So again. Now, the next one is gonna be in the bridge, what did I write here? Three minutes and 12 seconds. We're gonna be playing the G note here, eighth fret of that B string to A, 10th fret. Okay, so you can do that, hammer on, or you can slide into it too. All right, now the next bit there is gonna be that. Again, really, really cool melodic line. Second finger placing that on the eighth fret of that G string, all right, to the ninth fret, okay, the G string, to that E note. First finger on the eighth fret of that B string to the 10th fret, and then sliding or hammering on again to the eighth fret, eighth fret to 10th fret of the B string. So it'll sound like this. Do that again. And again, notice how I'm giving it a little vibrato, okay? And totally cool to do on an acoustic guitar, okay? Again, really, really fun line, really, really fun song. I encourage you guys, those of you who don't know this song, go and listen to it. Great, I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's a really, really great one. Again, it's always such an honor to hang out with you guys and teach you how to play some of my favorite songs. Again, if you're enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps the cause to check out all the cool stuff that Fishman is up to. I have a link in the video description. You can check it out there. As always, wishing you guys so much success in your musical journey. Uh, I encourage you to play a lot of music. It's It sure is a lot of fun. And again, subscribing to the channel really, really helps the cause. And you know, it always, it helps more people. So spread the word, all right? So again, my name is Angela Petrilli. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me to learn Mr. Jones by the Counting Crows. Everybody take good care.